Uh, morning and welcome to the Kids Involved with Technology Conference. Glad to see everybody here. I uh, introduce myself. I'm Travis Crescens. I'm with ITS department. I actually work in a sub-department called Help Desk. And at the Help Desk, I help answer phones. I float all around campus taking care of computer problems and trying to figure out what's wrong with computers. Uh, they'll call in with problems anywhere from, I can't get to the internet, mouse doesn't work, computer won't start, uh, all kinds of various questions. And I basically go around and try to figure out why it's not working. And you need to know hardware as well as software to be able to fix a lot of these problems. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many of you have a computer class at school? OK. And in that class, is it mostly just teaching you about uh, how to use Microsoft Word, something like that, basically just how to type and internet and kind of some of the basics? But they don't talk about computer hardware, though, do they? OK. Typically, the classes don't concentrate much on hardware. It's more of how to use the computer. Uh, we'll try to dive in here a little bit. I'll go ahead and move this down a little bit. I've lost my clicker. Let me start this over because it's not working. There it is. OK, there are basically 10 parts to a computer. And we've kind of made a quick little list here of the components that you would see involved in a computer. And we'll go over each one of these. Case. It is the metal or plastic device that contains all the other components in a computer. Basically keeps them all in there nice and clean, covers all that stuff up so you don't see it. Next we have a power supply. Uh, the power supply is basically an electronic hardware component that basically supplies power to that uh, motherboard, the hard drive, all those little components that are in there. It basically gives it power. And it receives its power from usually the wall. We've got you know, an outlet here. And that outlet produces AC, which means alternating current. And it means that you've got this 120 volt power, and it has a plus and minus, and it switches back and forth like 60 times a second. And it's just going back and forth, back and forth. Well, a lot of your electronic stuff likes DC power. So it basically takes this AC power and converts it to DC, which is direct current. And that direct current is just a solid positive and minus, and it just holds that power right there. And then it also does some switching of, of the power and changes it from 120 volts to uh, a lot of things are 5 volts in there. Some things are 12. Some things are 24. But we've got a power supply that I've taken off this case. And you can see all the, the stuff that's in there and then the, the board that all that stuff's plugged into. So we'll, we'll pass that around. Next, we've got the motherboard. I've always called it a motherboard. Some people refer to it as a main board or a logic board. Uh, logic board, typically Apple refers to their motherboards as a logic board. And it is the main circuit board that all your communication happens on. That's where everything's plugged in. Uh, CPU, the RAM, PCI, USB, all that kind of stuff has to go through this board here to talk. And most importantly, it all goes through this. The CPU normally plugs in here. And if this device wants to talk to that device over there, it has to talk to this, this main uh, CPU, which we'll get into next. But this board itself is basically the kind of central nervous system or the backbone of a computer. That's where everything happens. Next, we've got the CPU. And it plugs in the wherever that CPU is located on this one. It's right up here. And it's what does all the computing. Uh, we've got uh, ones and zeros. And we have mathematical formulas that have to happen number crunching, all that kind of stuff. It all happens in this 
this chip. And uh, this chip is not actually here, it's been removed. And I'm going to pass this around, but you'll notice that all these pins are smashed. Um, and some of these capacitors have been smashed or bent over. Uh, this was a bad board that they've taken out of a, a computer and replaced it with a new one. Thank you. I'll put this back up here. So I'll pass this around, but basically our uh, hardware guy, when he took this out, so somebody doesn't put this back in another machine, or he doesn't himself forget that this is a bad board, he'll break some stuff on there so that he doesn't get it confused and, and have to figure out why he's got another computer later on that's not working, and, and sometimes they're kind of tricky to figure out what's going on. But that is a motherboard, and that is actually mounted to what's called a... Uh, a plate there that keeps that motherboard standing up off the, the uh, metal so it's not touching. Because what would happen if you probably touched the back of that board to metal? It'd probably short out. So they've got this uh, motherboard tray and it keeps everything from being uh, touched and kind of protected. So basically I got this, the CPU that plugs into this motherboard and it does all the uh, processing. And this the CPU is kind of the brains of your computer. It's, it does all the computing. Next we've got RAM. Uh, usually it is called random access memory. And it's the place where your operating system, your applications, uh, any kind of uh, temporary data that's, that's happening on your computer, um, you're surfing the internet, you're doing things, all that stuff is kind of kept in RAM so that when you want to do something else that it just did, it's it's it knows about it. It says, oh yeah, I just did that. It's over here in RAM. RAM is very quick. You put that information out there, it can get to that information and recall it very, very quickly. The other part about RAM that you probably need to know is that it is, because this is kind of temporary stuff, it, it holds this data on this RAM. Um, the way this RAM is designed, it's just temporary. So when you turn the computer off, all that data goes away. So it basically forgets about who it is and what it's doing. It's just every day, it's a new day. It just starts up and it, it does what it's told to do and it's temporary. Here's a slide that I, or a picture that I found on the internet that I thought was kind of neat. There's a whole bunch of different styles of RAM and there's probably even more than that out there. This is just kind of a nice little representation of, of different RAMs. Here's kind of an earlier version of RAM um, notice it's 30 pins, and you know, they've got different acronyms at um, each different picture there. But basically, these chips were large, and then later on, they change and they, they become smaller, flatter, and physically smaller, where they can get more little memory modules on there. And then it gives them more room to add all these little components on there. And they get more stuff, com you know, compacted on that board to make it do more things, make it faster, give it more RAM or more memory to work with. Uh, these little sticks here, the, the smaller ones, they look like a half stick. Let's pass some of these around. Take that. Thanks. These are both the same. Basically, these sticks here, the short ones or the half ones, are typically found in where? Do you have an idea where you might find smaller pieces of RAM? Yes? Laptops. laptops, you're right. Typically, laptops have smaller RAM because laptops are smaller and they're, they've got less room. So they have to make things small wherever they can. So typically, they'll have little, little pieces of RAM in there. Now, a lot of times, it used to be that RAM and laptops were physically smaller, and that also meant you probably had less RAM, too. Uh, and typically it was smaller because uh, where they had to put it in there, and that meant they couldn't get as much stuff on that chip, and it was a little slower, too. But every day, things get smaller and faster, and they kind of start making up for it being slow, and they come up with new stuff. Uh, and then as we get down here, you notice that we went from 30 pins we're down to 184, 240. They're adding more of these little copper connectors there at the bottom of those sticks of RAM that you passed around. They've actually got more little points of contact and that gives it more information, more ways to get the data in and out. There's more what they call lanes. It's uh, kind of like little, little highways for it to get that information to and from the RAM. Video card. It's basically an interface card that allows uh, the computer to keep track of 
visual or video information. Um, or they also call it a graphics accelerator. Long time ago, there was only certain colors that they had. They only had like black and white. And then they had green colors. And then they would get eight colors. And then they would get 16. And then it was 256. They kept upgrading and getting more and more colors. Things started looking nicer and nicer. But the CPU couldn't do all that work. It was just too much information to keep track of. So they soon came out with video cards that take care of, of just the video because that's a lot of information to try to take care of. So they basically came up with this device and it takes care of just video and it helps out with the CPU. Um, go back to this here real quick. On the hard drives, here's a hard drive that I took the co cover off this morning. That's the inside of a hard drive. This is what's called a single platter. And I think we've got this on the next one. This is a single platter and it, and it spins here. And these are magnetic. There are the little ones and zeros and the information are stored in uh, these little bits on this drive. And when you turn the power off to this, because it's magnetic, it stores this information so it's still there. And uh, no, this is somebody else's computer that the hard drive wasn't working right and uh, we replaced it. And this is a fairly old one, so this is probably eight years old. Now, can anyone see a difference between those? What do you think was wrong with this one? Um, that one's all scratched. Yeah, that one's all scratched. Basically, these little there's a little arm in there that goes back and forth and reads that information. Basically, this is what's called a head crash that head crashed into that plate and basically started grinding the disc. And you see it's actually on both sides. And actually, same disc, it had two platters. And it actually had four head crashes. And it sounded really bad. It sounded like somebody was grinding. Some of these hard drives have one platter. Some of them have two platters. And they sit like this. And there's two of them in there. And they've got a head for each side it has to read. So it can write data on top and bottom on both sides. What do you think these are? Yes? Um, the, uh, those on that, mm -hmm. um, the back of it, no, yeah? Yep, and well. Right. Yep, these are platters too, and these came out of a laptop. Laptop hard drives are typically smaller. Or if you've ever seen the old original iPods, they had hard drive, mm -hmm. small hard drives in them. Okay. And the new iPods have memory now, and they don't. They just have little chips on them. But these are actually small laptop uh, platters. And all that type, it's, it's not memory, but that, that all that information is stored on those hard drives. So when you turn it off, there. it's still there. Well, how do they get that information back? Uh, it has to, it can read or it can write. If you need the information back, you're going to read that information. And you're reading little, it's kind of like static electricity sort of. There's a little electrical pulses that are still on there that it can read. Mm 